Hey there, welcome to the first uh, true lesson in module one about email basics. Here in lesson one, we're talking about the purpose of email. And th this is an important lesson because until you know the purpose and the goal and the reason that you're sending your emails, you're not going to succeed. Email is not something that you can simply technically execute you have to know the why, and you have to know a little bit about what you're trying to achieve. So that's what we're talking about here in lesson one. Now, the goal of email marketing is to make your audience feel like you are a friend. And this may be something that strikes you as a bit odd, but I will tell you that the success of my email marketing is that people on my list honestly feel like we are friends. And so they interact with me, they are connected with me, and that has then turned them into raving fans who want to buy what I have to offer. So that is your goal. Email marketing is all about the way to nurture and then ultimately sell to your audience. Now, in this lesson, a bit more specifically, what we're going to talk about is that you're going to learn to think of email marketing as a two-way conversation. You'll learn that email marketing is about building connections with your audience, and you'll learn why you generally should not include design elements in email. We're going to talk about that because it's something that comes up over and over again. Now, before we, we kind of dive into those specifically, though, remember that we are talking about email marketing, not just email. So your goal should be to make money. And I have to stress this because the lesson here is going to be talking a lot about building connections and making your list feel like your friends. But you have to remember that this is marketing after all. And so your ultimate goal is, of course, to make money. But understanding the best way to do that is what we're talking about here. But also understand that you should not feel bad for one second about selling with email or sending emails to make money. And I have to address this because candidly, I hear from so many people that they feel like they're sending too many emails, that they're bothering people, or you know, that they're worried that people don't want to be sold to, etc. Again, that might be the case. But remember, the reason why you have your email list, the reason why you're engaging in email marketing is to sell your products and services. And so you should not be bashful about that one bit. Now, so we've established that you should want to make money, but here's the counterintuitive thing. The best way to make money with email is to treat it like email with a friend. In other words, I want you to think about what you're doing in your email marketing from the perspective of how would I approach this if I were sending an email to a friend? Because again, you'll remember, what you want is for your subscribers to feel like you are a friend. And so if you treat your email marketing from that perspective and say, how would I send an email to a friend that fosters that relationship? And so there's a few rules we need to talk about. Now, first, you need to stop thinking of email as a megaphone and start thinking of it as a way to start two-way conversations with your audience. Now, too many entrepreneurs think of email marketing as a way to blast messages to their audience. Basically, they think of it as just another way to blast out messages so that a lot of people will hear them and maybe will buy from them. But warning, when you treat email as a megaphone, it feels to your audience like you're talking at them or maybe like you're just trying to sell to them. And no one likes that feeling. Think about it for a second. Do you like it when you're being talked at or even talked to? No, you don't like that. But if you approach your email from that perspective of it's a way to blast messages out, you are doing that and giving that feeling to your audience. So you want to avoid doing that. And instead of thinking of email as a way to blast out messages, use it to literally start conversations with your audience. And again, this is kind of metaphorical, but also literal here. Some ways I want you to think about your emails as a way to kind of start conversations, even if they don't. 
But the gold standard is if they actually do start conversations. Because conversations with your audience let you let's they they let you discover what your audience likes, discover what your audience needs. In other words, what are their frustrations? What are their pain points? What is it that they feel like they're not getting? And those conversations allow you to become a trusted friend for them. Again, I have these conversations with my email list on a regular basis. People respond to my emails with with something and then I reply back. And just think about the power that comes from those conversations. When I am having these conversations, it's the equivalent of learning about what are the touch points. And we've all heard about work of identifying your ideal customer avatar and interviewing them and and understanding them and all of those things. And what I will tell you is that these conversations that aren't expressly about that are the best way to actually get that insight because people will let down their guard when you're having these conversations with them and they will share information both directly by telling you, but also in the subtext of what they write. And so you'll be able to pick up on all of these things and understand how best to serve your audience. So that's rule number one. Treat your email as a not as a way to blast messages, but instead as a way to have a two-way conversation. But rule number two is to focus that the focus of your email marketing is to build connections with your audience. Now, we've all heard this expression that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And that is the reality. That's what what, what we find is that people buy from us. Now, and, and I want to be clear, some people will buy from you because you're the cheapest, for example, if you are the cheapest. You will have some some spontaneous buyers. But most buyers will choose to buy from you versus a competitor or someone else because they have gotten to know, like, and trust you. And so email is a way to do that. And when you focus on building connections with your audience, you are building the know, like, and trust factor with your audience. When they feel connected to you, just think about it. They will feel like they know you. They will feel like they like you. And again, the connection may or may not build the trust factor, but it at least makes them feel like maybe they don't have to be skeptical about you. So use your audience or use your email to create connections by letting your audience find things that they have in common with you. This is one of the most important points for you to understand. Human beings crave connection, crave the ability to have something in common with people. It's the reason why, for example, if if I'm walking down the street in Washington, D.C. with one of my University of Texas shirts and someone else like is a University of Texas fan and they see me walking down the street, there's a good chance that they're going to show me the, 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 the hook them horns, the hand signal for our university, because there is this connection of us having that in common. And that is a small microcosm. And when you do this with your email, by you, you let them find those things they have in common with you, they'll start saying, oh, me too, I get that. And they will want to be your friend. They'll want to be your customer. So building, you know, you build connections by telling stories that let your audience in, by using analogies that resonate, but also by varying your stories to connect with different people. So the concept here is that if you tell stories from your life, it allows people to get to know you. If you're you're letting these little vignettes, and we'll talk about this more, especially when we get um, to the weekly emails module, but when you are telling these stories, what you end up finding is that, that people get to the point that they can connect with these little things that are happening in your life or have happened in your life because it is a common experience. And that then builds that connection. But again, if you're always telling the same kind of stories, like the exact same things over and over again, the problem is you're only giving a small window of things for people to connect with. So by sharing various tidbits from various parts of your life and various phases of your life journey, you end up 
building connections with a broader range of people. People have connected with me, for example, because I was in high school debate and they were too. People have connected with me about beer and also about, for example, that I don't like certain beers that they do like. Or people have connected with me when I told the story of getting an email about uh, there being a case of lice in my daughter's school because they have kids and they relate to, to lice and those issues. And those are just some of the little stories that you can see how by telling all of these different stories, I'm connecting and giving various members of my audience the ability to connect with me. So those are stories. But analogies are other things. Again, I use beer as an analogy quite frequently because I believe there are lessons from that I can tell about business related to beer. For example, I talk about beer is best when it's simple, kind of like business. And that's an example of an analogy. It's not a story, but it's an analogy. Or I'll an analogize to food because I enjoy food. And so those are the things that you can do that aren't necessarily a story, but an analogy or a theme that you can use, and those build connections as well. So these are the ways that you're going to work to build connections through your emails. But that takes us to rule three, which is this, except in very specific cases, you should use plain text email rather than including design elements to dress up your emails. And by design elements here, I'm talking about kind of a, a header with your logo. I'm talking about any of these kind of newsletter designs that are all stylized, etc. And the reason why is simple. When you email a friend, do you include fancy design elements? Of course not. What you do when you email a friend is you open, for example, your Gmail or whatever email system you, you're using, and you just type out a note. Now, maybe you include a picture in there because it's a funny picture, but you're not including logos and you're not including some fancy formatted thing. It's largely just text. So the warning here is that newsletter formats and designed layouts are a signal both to your audience and to the email services that the email is promotional. So that last point so that you understand, if you use design formats and things like that, your email is more likely to go to, for example, the promotions tab in Gmail. And it's also more likely to be filtered by the different filtering systems that will put things into promotions because these email systems know that friends don't use design layouts and don't use newsletter formats. So when you do that, it hurts your deliverability, but also, especially for a new subscriber, when they open it, they immediately realize, oh, this is a promotional of some sort. And so avoiding that will help you. So your emails to your email list should look like the emails you send to a friend no fancy designs or header images. Now, you can include some images later on after some paragraphs, especially if they build the connection. But what I'm talking about is, you know, you will have those things at the top of various emails that very clearly say to you, oh, this is a weekly email or this is a promotional email from someone to someone's email list. Don't use those. Again, unless you are in a very rare exception. And the very rare exception might be, for example, if you are in, in an industry that expects design elements. Um, but most of us will not fall into that category. So stray from this only if there is a very specific reason to do it. So that's the important part of lesson of, of kind of rule three. So the key lesson takeaway here in lesson one is to approach the emails you send your list like you would approach sending emails to your friends to make the most money. That's the part that you need to grasp is we're not sending emails like we would send to our friends because that's just what we want to do. We're doing it because that fosters the relationship, builds the connections, and ultimately makes us more money through our emails. So that's the key lesson takeaway. Now, in the next lesson, you'll learn the five-part journey to take your audience on, how to navigate the different email sequences and emails, and the role each phase in the journey serves. I'll see you in the next lesson.